Ladies and gentlemen, Sean the Razor here. And yes, I've been away for quite a while, uh, but I'm back and I thought the best way for me to come back would be to give you guys uh, another food video and give you guys a recipe. And what I've decided to do today is pizza. And I'm going to show you some things that will help you uh, make a custom pizza and then I will also give you some information to easily scale that pizza you know if you're if your macros are here or if you have quite a bit of macros uh, you'll be able to scale this recipe uh, to fit your macros so whether you're dieting or not dieting uh, you can still have pizza All right, so a couple things. First off, when you make a pizza, uh, a good pizza starts with a good crust. And for that, you would need bread flour. You also need some kind of sweetener. I do recommend uh, Splenda, but you can use sugar. Uh, you can use honey. You can use a whole bunch of different kinds of sweetener uh, to give the crust a little uh, sweetness. Uh, salt is also needed. That's going to help bring out the flavor of the crust. And then instant dry yeast is also very important. And I will let you guys know why that's important coming up. All right, so as far as the bread flour goes, if we look on the nutrition label here, we'll see that the serving size is 30 grams. It's 1 fourth cup. I do weigh this out because it tends to be more accurate that way. And so we have 22 grams of carbohydrates per serving, as well as four grams of protein and zero fats. And personally, uh, the pizza I'm making today is going to have nine servings, okay? And if you have less carbohydrates, you can scale that back. Uh, but today we're going to do nine servings so 9 times 30 is going to be 270. We're going to be looking for 270 grams of bread flour. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to put the 270 grams of bread flour along with a uh, teaspoon of salt into a bowl. And that we're going to wait uh, to add our wet ingredients, which I will go over next. All right, an extra part of our wet ingredients would be oil. Uh, I'm going to use extra light olive oil. And so I forgot to talk about that earlier, but oil is pretty much optional. You don't have to. I find that if I use a little bit, um, it does make for a better crust. And with this recipe, I'm only gonna put in a half serving. So about seven grams or seven and a half grams. Uh, you know, we'll just make it an even eight grams. Um, it does make for a better crust. So, all right. So right here, uh, I have the start of my wet ingredients. First, we have to proof the yeast. Okay. We have to wake up the yeast or instant dry yeast. We have to wake it up and uh, give it something to eat so it can start doing its work. Um, so that's what we'll do first. This right here, uh, for every three servings of the bread flour, for every three servings, uh, you will use 50 grams of water, okay? So I have 150 grams of water here for my nine servings, okay? If you wanna further divide that up, you can actually figure out how many grams per one serving. If you just take 50 grams divided by three, you'll get that answer. Uh, if you happen to have an uneven uh, uh, you know, or even number of bread servings. Um, <clears throat> okay, so we have 150 grams of, uh, it's hot water from the tap. And I do that because I'm putting, uh, this is actually kept in the fridge at a cool temperature. And we want the uh, water to be warm, not cold, in order for these guys to wake up. And then we're gonna feed it some of the sweetener. 
Okay, so we have our uh, warm water here. What we are going to do is we're going to use six packets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, so for each three servings of the bread flour, we're going to use two packets of sweetener. So we're going to go ahead and put that in the water. All right, we've got six packets in there. If you're uh, getting really accurate with your macros, that's about a gram of uh, carbohydrates for each packet. So it adds about six grams of carbohydrates. All right, then we're gonna take one teaspoon. All right, so about a third of a teaspoon per three servings of the bread flour. We're gonna go ahead and put that in there. And then we're going to mix it up. Now, you guys can take a look at that, and you'll see that it's cloudy, and we're going to come back in about 10 minutes and see how it looks. Okay, so now we have the yeast that's been brought alive here, and I'm trying to bring it up to the camera so you can see. But it starts getting real foamy. You can start seeing all the uh, uh, carbon dioxide bubbles that are starting to form. And that's how we know we have some nice proofed yeast. Okay? So uh, once you hit that, once that is done, we're going to go ahead and put our oil in it. And like I said, I'm just going to put about eight, 8 grams of oil in here. So not very much. And we'll actually put 10, ten in there. <clears throat> but that's fine. And so we're going to kind of mix that up a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and put that into our bread flour. Now remember, we have nine servings of bread flour in here. And we also have a teaspoon of salt that we put in there. And now we're going to mix this all together. Now if you have a stand mixer, this is going to be a lot easier because you can use that with the dough hook and, uh, and you're fine. Uh, but if you don't have a mixer like me, you can use a spoon and I'll show you a, a way to really get in here and get this incorporated. So you start with the spoon and you get everything kind of together for the most part and then you can start using your hands. Now, here's a tip for the wise here. If you, if you use your knuckles, it's not going to want to stick as much as if you use your hands. So I kind of use both, but I primarily kind of uh, overlap it and then press it down with my knuckles to incorporate it. And I'll keep doing that until I'm pretty consistent. Sometimes what I might do is I might pour the rest of it in the middle, fold it over like this, and then go and incorporate that into it. Okay, so fold it over and knead it with your knuckles as much as you need to until it is fully incorporated. And so you don't have to have a uh, stand mixer to make good dough. Believe me, this stuff is going to turn out really tasty. Alright, after you get that incorporated, after you're doing that for a couple minutes, then what you're going to want to do Take a little bit of bread flour, put it on a surface. I'm going to put mine on a cutting board, but you can put it right on the table if you got a clean table. You're going to take the dough, and basically, you're just going to start kneading the dough. 
Now, if you guys did this correctly, at this point, you're probably pretty fascinated by the fact that the dough is not overly sticky, it's not too dry. That means that you weighed everything out perfectly and you're gonna come out with some great dough. Now, if it's too wet right now, you're gonna to wanna to add a little bit of bread flour. If it's too dry, you might uh, wanna add just a little bit of water, just a little bit, you know. Um, the easiest thing to do is just have all your stuff measured out correctly and then you don't have to worry about that. All right, so you're gonna do this for a couple minutes. And basically this is going to further incorporate everything and it's also going to, uh, I think what it also does is it sets up the, uh, uh, the gluten in here and everything to, to do its job. So you have to make sure that it's kind of worked in here, everything's incorporated and ready to go. The next step is going to be the proofing stage. All right, so after you kind of work it in, you're gonna roll it into a dough ball. Okay, there's my dough ball. Kind of shape it up as you wish. So you're gonna take your bowl Make sure we're still recording. We are. All right. Spray it with some nonstick. Go ahead and put that in the bowl. And then you're going to put something over the top of it. Uh, I usually use, um, you know, a dish towel. And I'll put it over the top of this. And we're going to let it sit for about 45 minutes to an hour. All right, guys. We have our... Uh, dough right here. We have it covered. It's going to rise. It's going to double or triple in size. That's what we're looking for. Um, uh, the best conditions for this is going to be a uh, uh, basically you want to keep it to where it's not getting cold or anything. You know, um, you know, the best conditions are probably about 100 degrees with 85% humidity. You know, but even just covering it like this, it's going to work out just fine. Um, okay, so for you guys that are real low carb, um, I don't get endorsed by these people, but uh, LC Pizza and Bagel Flour is ideal uh, if you're dieting. Let me see if I can get a close up on the macros here. <laughs> All right, so we have two grams of fat. 9 grams of carbohydrates, 7 which are fiber, and 2 grams of, uh, well, 11 grams of protein. And so, <clears throat> right here you can see the serving size, similar to the bread flour, 27.2 instead of 30. So you can basically use the same measurements, and you're getting a pizza crust that is very low carb, very high protein, uh, and low fat. Okay, so I use this during prep. I even use it without oil. Um, you know, it tastes pretty decent. And uh, if you're low carb in it, this is going to be good for you. And I believe the uh, URL is www.holdthecarbs.com. And I'll uh, make sure to check just to make sure that's correct for you guys. But uh, that's it LC Pizza and Bagel Flour. Highly recommend this if you're deep in prep. Um, I had pizza all through my prep, even towards the very end. Um, I actually ate pizza more frequently than I do now in my off season. All right, so we've been letting our dough rise and I'm really hungry, so I'm not gonna wait the whole hour. It's been about 20 minutes. It's risen a little bit, um, so uh, really that's up to you whether you want a nice uh, crust that's airy or if you just want to bake it right away uh, but I would recommend that you let it rest at least 20 minutes to kind of let that gluten develop and it it does help out a lot so I would say minimum 20 minutes if you want the best crust uh, leave it go for about an hour all right so 
Let me set the camera up here. I'm just going to use the table. I've already flowered it. And so all I'm going to do now, I just, yeah, so I put a little flower down, not very much. All I'm going to do is basically just start bringing it out a little bit. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to, uh, you don't want to roll it out. You don't want to press it down too hard because then uh, you're going to mess up the structure of the pizza. All right, so we don't really want to do that because that's when you get pizza that is too thin. It doesn't rise properly in the oven when you cook it, and it's just not going to have the same feel. Okay, so now I'm going to start throwing this around a little bit, guys. Keep in mind, I'm not a uh, uh, expert at this, so you know, don't uh, don't really take notes on my uh, technique as far as uh, um, this goes, because you know you, you could do a lot better, I'm sure. You know, some of you guys are probably laughing at me right now. <clears throat> All right, after you get your uh, pizza dough where you want it, you know, you have it uh, kind of thrown out to where it's looking pretty good. Uh, you know, you should have a, a nice, uh, well, I just broke that right there. You should have a nice about 14 inch, uh, 12, 12 to 14 inch uh, crust here. Now, if you rolled it out, you can actually get this 16 to 18 inches, but it's not going to be the same type of crust, okay? I can guarantee this type of crust is going to be a lot better. It's going to taste a lot better uh, and have a better texture. Well, taste will probably be about the same, but the texture is going to be better. All right. So now we got the dough and we've put it on our pizza screen here. We are going to pre-bake this dough for about uh, uh, for about four or five minutes. And basically, this is just. Uh, going to make sure that after we put the toppings on it, we bake it the rest of the way. It's going to be nice and crispy on the outside and uh, airy and soft on the inside. Alright, so as far as toppings go, uh, you guys can use whatever you want. Here's what I'm going to use today, 2% uh, mozzarella. Mozzarella seems to melt a little bit better than some of the other cheeses and also, you know, I mean that's your go-to cheese for pizza. Turkey pepperoni, highly recommend this. Tastes just as good, if not better, than regular pepperoni uh, without all the extra added fat. Um, so a very good choice. Uh, I use uh, bacon bits, which add a textural element as well as flavor. Very good. And I got the uh, hickory smoke flavor right here. And then I, I very much rarely use pizza sauce whenever I make pizza. I usually use uh, uh, Classico Alfredo sauce, light Alfredo sauce. And this is the Asiago Romano, which is really good. And sometimes I will mix this with pizza sauce, make a pink sauce, uh, but this is very good uh, just on its own. And sometimes I'll put sriracha in the sauce uh, before putting the cheese and other toppings on. And that makes uh, for a very good uh, flavor profile. All right, so those, those are the ingredients that I'm going to use. Um, you guys can use whatever you want. If you want to add different ingredients, go for it. Uh, but that's what we're going to use today. And uh, also, uh, pre-baking the crust right now, um, it's at 450. That's usually the temperature that I go with, uh, but it's a really old oven, so it's probably between 400 to 450. All right, so I just took the crust out of the oven. As you can see, it started browning just a little bit. It's got a nice airiness to it. I mean, that's basically what we want to see. Uh, now I'm going to put the toppings on, and then I'm going to throw it back in for about 10 to 12 minutes, I imagine. And basically, there's no set time for this. I basically just put it in the oven until uh, the cheese gets golden brown and then I take it out. So however long that takes, generally speaking, it's probably between 10 and 12 minutes.
at about 425, 450. All right, guys, here's the finished product. And I just now took it out of the oven. You can see nice golden brown color in the crust. Everything else is looking good. Uh, if I adjust my height here, I'm on a tripod, so you'll have to excuse me. If I adjust my height, you can see that it does have some depth to it. It's not a flat pizza. And that's the kind of crust that you can expect to get when you make it yourself. All right, so I'm about to dig into this. I hope this was helpful to you and you're able to make uh, pizza. If you do, let me know. Uh, let me know what you come up with, but yeah.